Hello, this is Christy. Thank you for joining me today. It is finally here. Camtasia 2022 launches today and I have promised to cover everything. I have taken it through its paces for the last couple of weeks. I've edited most of my new projects in Camtasia 2022 for the last couple of weeks as well. And I'm ready to show you what's new in Camtasia 2022. So there's a bunch of new functionality, new effects, new changes in the interface. And, uh, you know, it looks like TechSmith is building upon some new things from last version. And now they're making those better, adding more integration with some software. And I'm going to, you know, just show you everything that I found so far. This video includes quite a few features and choose the chapters below to go to the appropriate section, go back to the ones you want to watch again. And over the next few days, I will be covering some of these features in more detail. So subscribe to my channel if you want to see all of those in great detail with examples. And I also have a bunch of tutorials coming up that use some of these features more specifically applied to various use cases. And also, thanks to TechSmith, I am able to offer two free copies of Camtasia 2022, two free licenses. If you want to enter a draw to win these, there's no purchase necessary. Just make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. The link is in the description and you will be entered into the draw for a new license for Camtasia 2022, courtesy of TechSmith. So thank you TechSmith for offering these two licenses. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter to be entered. And I will be announcing this week who is the winner for that. So let's not delay anymore. Let's go into the new features for Camtasia 2022. Here goes the first one. The first thing you see, of course, is the startup screen, or as it's called now, the home screen. And you know that last year it was redesigned uh, to support larger resolution screens and bigger icons and some new functions in there. So now TechSmith's taken this a little further and improved a little bit the look of it. I like how it looks and it has a little more appeal if you want. It shows a all of the common functions you've come to use. It has quick access to these applications. If you have them installed, you can start a new recording right here on the home screen. And also you can see you have recent projects which show you a thumbnail of the projects that you have opened recently. So the most recent one is first, they show a big thumbnail and apparently that thumbnail shows the frame that you left the playhead when you last saved that project. So I think it keeps a cache of the thumbnail of that particular frame. So if you see there, I have a few projects open. It seems to keep about eight recent entries and all of them show the last frame that was on the screen at the time of closing down the project. And now on the side, you also have learn, which, you know, you kind of had before, but it seems a little nicer now. And you have resources, help and all those things, which, you know, I usually don't really look around here. And on the bottom left, you have your account and you have your benefits or subscription if you have a maintenance subscription for Camtasia. So that's kind of it. This is a big screen. And if you open a project, so let me just open this project, for example, you need to double click to open. So the home screen can be brought up by pressing Control H. So Control H brings up the home screen again. And you can also find it in the file menu home right there. So that's the home screen. That's uh, a little improved from last time. Another feature that's listed in the new features list, and I think it's a big deal for TechSmith, is Camtasia 2022 comes with a 1000, I think, at the number I've seen, uh, assets, pre-built library for Camtasia 2022. You don't have to pay for this and it comes pre-installed along with the other library you had, 2021, 2022. So now you have a lot of things in here on the library itself, pre-built assets from TechSmith that you can use. You have some audios, files for different effects and music maybe. You have some callouts, and we can see here, of course, the counters that I have um, talked about before, and I've actually shown you how to build these in Camtasia 2021. Well, 
Now they, you don't have to do that little hack with this reusable asset. You can actually use them from this library right here. And you can see they play um, just nicely. You can drop them and there's different variations here. I explained them all. I may do another video on these. So there's also indicators and various text uh, based assets with a little bit of animation on them. So if you watch this one, for example, it has a bit of a animation and then there's a text. And a lot of these assets you can customize on the right side. So TechSmith is leaning very hard on those quick properties functionality that was introduced in 2021, which of course was there before, but you couldn't actually use it and access it in Camtasia. That's when it was added the first time. You can create groups with things in them and you can use them, the quick properties on the right side to customize well. A lot of these assets that come with Camtasia 2022 build on that functionality and they have actually had some artists kind of go in and design a bunch of these assets that you can then, you know, just drop into your project. You can customize the colors and the text on some of them. You can even customize the image that goes in. Like if it's a media, it's a device frame, for example. So if I scroll down here and I'm actually going to do a separate video, just walking through all of these library assets groups. So, but for this video, I'm just going to go and show you what's in here. Like you have these counters, you have indicators and texts with like this one, you can just place it somewhere on your project and just kind of animates. You have various title reveals. Like if I'm just dropping this in here, you see a little animation and then with an indicator and text, the same thing, variations of the same theme. And if you scroll down, there's a lot of indicators like this, many, many groups. And what I've noticed is a lot of these can't actually be customized. There's something called like folder group called channel kit, which it has like a subscribe button, which, you know, it's something that you could build before as well. So, but these actually, some of them, you can see you can customize the colors and the text right here. But if you look in the media library, in the media bin, after adding one of these to my project, if I look around, I see that some of them like this one, subscribe bell, right? Um, some of them are JSON files. So if you paid attention last year, TechSmith introduced Lottie file support, which means, you know, Lottie files, you can download them from websites like lottiefiles.com and you can build them yourself in After Effects, for example, introduced by the people at Airbnb, I believe. These Lottie files are vector animations that you can load into Camtasia. And I've shown in my video last year that you can resize them and scale them as much as you like, and they don't lose quality. Well, this is actually the case here with these ones. So a lot of them are Lottie files. You can see this cursor uh, effect right here. This one just creates a little click with a bit of a arrow kind of highlight. Well, there's a lot of these included in this library from TechSmith. But if you see, if you scale this, it remains sharp, which means this is a Lottie file that is scalable, animatable, and so on. You can't customize though this. So I don't know if this is like a preview of hopefully what's coming next in Camtasia, being able to customize some of these Lottie files. I doubt it, but maybe, you know, <laughs> you can only wish. So that's nice because these are uh, vector formats, so you can make them large or small or whatever. So this library has a, a lot of stuff in here. You've got indicators with dividers. You've got the channel kit with some pre-built subscribe buttons. Then you have cursor animations, which is I just shown you right here. But, you know, there's different variations of the same kind of thing, only with maybe different colors. So I think that's the reason because you can't customize the Lottie files. So then there's a different colored version or different variation of each one. So that's what I think the reasoning behind making so many of them. So you've got the arrow, single click, hand, hand cursors right here. You can just drop these in overlay them on top of your videos and they do a little gesture, a little animation, and you can use these in your project. So I'm not going to spend too much on these. I'm just going to scroll through and show you. You have different, they call them cursor heroes, which again, they are some ver vector animated cursor that do different things. 
all of these, I think they're, they're in Lottie files. So there you go. So apparently TechSmith said there's about a thousand of these in this library. I'm not sure I want to be wrong, but then you have some emphasis effects, which again, they are broken down into different groups like bursts and collapses. So as you can see, they're different colors, but they essentially do the same thing. Look, they kind of show a little animation and you can just use it to put it on screen to draw attention to something. So these are a lot of groups like this, you know, just open one group and there's one version of those you can just drop in there, kind of experiment with. Let me know in the comments if you want me to kind of make a video just walking through all of these. But of course, if you download Camtasia or the trial version, you can play with these yourself and kind of discover what's in here. You've got flowers, hearts, light burst. Let's see what this is. There you go. Just a short, short animation. And from what I can see, you can't actually expand the duration on these. So if I'm right here on this one, it's playing once, but then I can't really make it longer. I can't, you know, if I want it to repeat, then I, I have just copy and paste it really to get it to do it twice. You have some uh, more expressive ones here. Uh, you can just have like a hand that follows some kind of path and kind of shows you you know, you can use it to surround some important thing that people need to see. Some hand-drawn ones. Again, some of these were in the previous versions. You could use them into the, the effects there, but now they are standalone in the library. You can just use them. A bunch of gradients, by the way. Again, these are... You can see this little symbol on the side, which shows you that it's a customizable asset, I think. So if I just add one of these dark gradients to my project, you can see that you can customize some of these things like the colors. And really what these are, if you look in the timeline, what these are, they're just groups. If I open these, there's two more groups in there. If I go inside of that group, there's a gradient mat with another group, two color gradient. You go in there and there's another shape, another shape and a gradient mat and another blur and a gradient map and another group. So you get it. These are pre-built things that you could do before, just gradients. And they may have different colors, different kind of blending options and stuff like this. But the fact that they're inside groups the quick properties are accessible for them. So you can then quickly change. So I suppose they are a bit of a time saver if you want. Pre-built gradients, dual tone, light, dark one, multicolored ones, which when I saw this first, I thought, ooh, that's nice. We can create multi-point gradients. Well, no, you can just use these gradients pre-built and customize their color. If you want to mess around with the placement, I guess you have to do a lot of work because you would have to dig deep into it to move these around. You can see when this one's like three colors, but you can't really move the points because what they are is just a bunch of rectangles with different gradient fills inside of a group. Nothing I haven't seen before on this one. Um, some of these are, you know, some of them, they are like animated backgrounds. Uh, look, you can just play this and kind of place it on top. So I guess this helps you kind of make your projects more interesting and not have to have bullet points and look like a boring PowerPoint. You can just have some moving stuff in the background, which again, you can customize the color for them. Of course, look at this and they look quite nice. Then you've got some pre-built icons and glyphs. Again, these are divided into micro animations. And really what I would say, these are no more than clip art. Sorry to sound disappointing. I'm not, but I'm just saying it's really Lottie files animated and built and added to the library. Maybe you appreciate that. Maybe you don't. You can build your own. I like to build my own stuff, but I can see myself using some of these for some projects where I just need to drop a quick arrow somewhere and show something, indicate something. And some of these are animated. So look, if I drop this in here, you know, it has a nice circle. So that's nice. It's not a boring old, just static image. It does something, it draws your attention. It adds a little flair to your projects. But I can also see that these could become old very quickly. <laughs> so you, uh, you decide if you want to use them or not. So there you go. This is all of those library things you can have there, pre-animated things. 
drop them into your project. So there's a lot of them. I expanded these groups actually, and there's quite a lot of them. I wouldn't doubt if they're about a thousand or so, maybe, I don't know. Um, save me some time. Like, you know, for example, you can have a lower third. Look, I just placed that in there. Boom, there's a little title for me and it has an in and out animation and done. So that saves me a lot of time. Maybe if I, if I just want to use that and drop it in, change the colors, maybe move on with my life. So that is your library. This is the second part of the uh, feature list. I have way more to come. So 2022 library, which seems to come with way more assets than previous versions. One feature that I really wanted, and now it's come to Camtasia 2022, is being able to change the anchor point of the rotation for an object. So let me show you what I uh, mean by this. If you have just any old annotation or any graphic or any object on your canvas right there, this object in the past, if you wanted to rotate it, it would only be done around the center of the object, right? That was it. You could not move this particular center of rotation right here. Well, now you can. If you hold down the control key, you can see that little center indicator blinks kind of green, I guess. So if you drag it now, you can move it to another portion of the object, another point, including outside of the object, which is really interesting. And I know you're going to know why I mean this. So for example, if I move this one here, I can now zoom out a bit. I can now rotate this object around that point. If I move this one in that corner, I can of course rotate the object around that corner. So that's important because you could now, you can now do more animation types or styles by just having this uh, option to vary the rotation point. So for example, in the past, if you wanted to create maybe an animation of a clock face, you actually had to create the clock face as a separate asset, a separate rectangle. And because you could only rotate it around the center, you had to somehow make half of it invisible, right? So because you could only rotate like this around the center of the object, then you had to find a way to not show half of it, right? But well, now you can actually just change the rotation point at the bottom there. And now you're rotating your clock face like this. Very nice. And by the way, once you move it, move it and you start to resize, I think this is a bug. But, or maybe it doesn't know exactly what you want because you're changing the geometry really, but you have to be careful because then you have to place the rotation handle again. And even nicer, you can animate this movement of the rotation point. So what I mean is this, on my timeline, I'm just gonna add an animation here and just make that animation, whatever. And then look, I am going at the end of my animation, I can just, move the rotation point there and you watch the rotation point move. Look, the object doesn't move yet because I haven't moved it, but the rotation point does. So right now, if at the same time I rotate the object itself, you will have a combined, <laughs> a combined animation that changes the rotation point on the fly. So that's quite cool, I think, because you can achieve some really interesting movements with this, like a leaf in the wind or something like that. Just like my animation with the clock face, I can just keep it in one point and have my clock face animation there. If I didn't move my point, I would then have a perfect clock face animation. So you can see the potential for this. You can create some really interesting animation because now you're not tied to the very center of the object. You can have this move around. You can create a, like a stepping object, walking cycles, maybe walking cycles. I don't know. I can, I'm going to try and experiment and do a separate video with this if I think it's interesting. This new feature has to do with the mouse cursor. Now, you know that in the past, when you recorded the screen with your mouse cursor, 
The mouse cursor was actually recorded as a separate track. You didn't have access to that because it was like numeric data recorded inside of the T-Rec file. That's why when you exported the T-Rec file separately, you were losing the cursor because the cursor was actual numeric data. Well, this new feature in Camtasia 2022 has to do all with the cursor data. So TechSmith is now helping to expose that data and give you access to it. And what I mean by this is, look, I have this screen recording here. Um, I just did a test recording, just pointing with my mouse to various places on the screen. You can see the cursor is quite small. I'm moving around. I'm kind of jiggling a bit. My hand isn't really steady. I just go through the menus and so on. The first thing is you can go to select the clip and go to this particular area, cursor properties. This is now available in Camtasia 2022. And the first thing is it allows you to scale the mouse cursor. Watch this. If I use the scale, you can have a very big mouse cursor. And you may recognize this actually from the library segment that I showed you where the mouse cursor is now vector, which means you can scale it up and down. And look, if I zoom in, it is very sharp. It's much sharper than my screen recording, right? So that's one thing, scaling the mouse cursor. The other thing is you can actually edit and see the cursor path. So if you click on this button here, edit cursor path, it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? Do you want to simplify the existing path, which if you remember was available in the previous versions by smoothing the cursor path, you know, there was an effect there and I think it's still there which allows you to smooth the movement. So if you have like a shaky hand or something, uh, it's gonna make it nice and smooth. Well, that's one thing. And the option here is to simplify the existing path or create a new path. I believe creating a new path will replace your, your path. So I'm gonna go into that in a minute, but simplify existing path. Let's go continue. So now you can actually visualize the path that my cursor has taken. So watch this, if I play, it doesn't show you the full path to start with. It shows it to you as it goes a few step backwards, a few step back, a few step forward. So watch this, my, this is my full mouse movement across my whole recording. So you can now see that. So one thing that you can do is if you say, oh, I kind of made a mistake right there and I shouldn't have gone back so you can actually go and select these little nodes and move them around. You have a Bezier curve kind of thing here. Watch this. So I can actually change the way that my mouse is moving after recording, which is really cool, I think, because, you know, sometimes you make mistakes or you say you, 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 hes you hesitate or maybe you click somewhere else. So there you go. This is the cursor animation path changing. So watch this part. This is quite cool here. So let's suppose that I have a menu with some options that if I scale my mouse cursor now and I play this, you see my cursor is moving, but it's actually on top of the menu I'm trying to show. Well, not a problem. I can see the full path and I can actually select around. It would be nice if there was an indicator. I can actually select all of the nodes here, you can see they're all yellow now, and I can move all of them to the side, which is quite cool because now my cursor is no longer going to play or move on top of the options. And of course the video will still show like the option, the menu items you're highlighting, they still show highlighting because that was the event triggered by the mouse at the time. But my mouse cursor now, I can manipulate this. I can even move it all the way here. I can just delete some steps or I can make it smoother and I can make it be in a certain position earlier or, you know, later. So look, this is cool. So now my mouse cursor moves all the way nice up and down. Another point that I wanted to make was uh, of course, you can access these little line type things here. So if you have a corner here that you want to change the type of 
movement. You can make it a straight line there. So when the cursor gets there, it will just go in a straight line according to your option. Well, here's another use case for this. You can actually apply this to any clip, even though you didn't record the cursor before. So imagine if you create a video and you, you decide to make a video of showing someone something, but you don't record the screen. You just have a screenshot. Okay. So let me demonstrate. So I took a screenshot of Camtasia. I'm going to bring that into my project right here and watch this. Now, let's say I want to explain something to someone. And of course you can do this with Snagit, by the way, but I want to explain something to someone and I want to animate the cursor showing them something, maybe showing them the menu right there. Well, I would have to record the screen in order to get my cursor moving and all that stuff. But actually TechSmith also included a new effect in Camtasia 2022 that if you have the screenshot and you can, or, or in any other clip, by the way, you can add an effect to it. And it's not a cursor effect. If you go to visual effects, it is called cursor path right here. You apply that to your picture of your screenshot and watch this. You have this default animation path. You of course have now access to this mouse cursor. Yeah. You can make the cursor larger and you can actually change the path so that your cursor is going where you want it to go. So let's assume I'm just going to zoom in here. Let's assume I want to show someone these menu items right there. I am changing my cursor path. You can change the Bezier curve to be a straight line. Click on that node and change that to be a straight line or maybe not really a straight line or like a curvy line, right? So watch this on the timeline down here, you have like what looks like an animation that was applied to that picture, to that screenshot, but it actually is the first point and the last point in the mouse cursor path. So now look, I play and my screenshot is showing this mouse cursor explaining stuff, right? If I decide, well, after this point, I want to go somewhere else and I don't have enough of the animation, I can go here and I can right click and I can say extend cursor path to playhead like this. And it creates another animation step here, which I can click on and I can add a new location for the mouse cursor that goes from this point somewhere else. Let's say that I want to go and show these menu items here. So I say, oh, okay, I want to be at the end. So right now, if I want to introduce a new step, a new node in between here, all I have to do is just move my playhead to that point and then it creates this point where the mouse cursor is and then just place that there. So now my mouse cursor is going to jump from here to there and there. If it's too fast, of course, extend your picture, extend the last step and you have it jumping from there and then going quite slowly. So you can see this is a very nice and easy way to control a fake mouse cursor on top of any video or image and have it, you know, demonstrate some things while you go back and narrate. So you're narrating, oh, look at all these menu items here and this mouse cursor that was, is moving. You didn't really record it to start with is showing stuff on the screen. So I think that's a cool feature here. And honestly, this is one of those things which I think it's a missed opportunity. And I do hope that TechSmith kind of goes further with this and allows me to not only animate what looks like a mouse cursor, but I would like to maybe animate other things along the path. This was another one of my requests, being able to animate an object along the path. Well, it looks like half the problem is solved here with this path animation thing, because if then they add a different cursor path kind of effect that I can actually change the way the cursor or assign the cursor to a different shape or a different object or maybe a video clip to have it follow this path. That would be fantastic. Please text me. Okay. 
<laughs> Another cool organic effect that was added in Camtasia 2021 is blending modes. What I mean by this, I think this is one of those features that was borrowed by, from Photoshop or other photo editing applications that allow you to change the way that different layers blend and show different effects between them. So what I mean is this, you have a video here, for example, um, I have this video of a plane taking off at some point. All right, here we go, some clouds, here we go. And now I may add another video on top of it, maybe this one, like some video of some smoke. Right? Well, now you can't see anything because the video is on top of the other video. But if you go to visual effects, there's a new effect here called blend mode. So you can see that it's an illustrative kind of thing of what it does. You drag that to the video that is on the top and Bob's your uncle. You have a double exposure effect right there. Look, the black has gone. So now the default blending mode, by the way, is screen. But you can change the blending mode right here and you can see whatever it does as a result. So if you go and overlay, you can add some dramatic effects to your videos. Um, you can invert the effect, you can change the intensity, and then you can choose a lot of stuff here to control what groups of colors blend or which colors don't blend. So this is quite advanced here. It, it takes, it probably will take a lot of experimenting before you can find and figure out what it does. You can also change the curve of the, the sort of like, not the histogram really, but the blending curve, right? So if I go and change something like a hard mix, this is a bit ridiculous, then you can control what colors are affected by this effect from the video that's the source or from the video that's below. And uh, I don't know exactly how to explain this, but if you go to the blending mode here, you can kind of experiment with all sorts of things. And it doesn't have to be just video. It can be, look, I mean, this one makes it look like a clip art, you know, it's quite cool. So where you have the blending there, you can use this for other types of objects. So for example, so I have this water video here. Okay, so now I can go and add an annotation, like a text on top of it, like this. Ocean, okay, not very creative. So then this text is on top of the video. But now with blending modes, if I add the blending mode to this text, watch this. Now the text actually blends differently with the background. So you can change the way that it blends right there. You see, so actually you can go and change it so that only different colors kind of show through this be this stencil alpha behaves like a, an alpha mask. There you go. Your ocean is just behind the text there, but also you can. You can change the color groups that blend or don't blend. And you can see actually the water is visible now and it looks really kind, kind of natural and interesting like this. So there's your blending modes. I mean, I could show you a bunch of examples of what you can do with this, but I think it's quite nice. And it, it adds a bit of an organic feel to the effects because to be very honest, stuff that you did in Camtasia, apart from a bunch of stuff that was added in recent years, like the motion blur and the maybe the drop shadow and some color effects they don't really look organic like you know blending pixels and making things look more natural everything is kind of flat if you think about it you have to be very creative to add a lot of layers a lot of things to make things look organic or kind of like what you would see in something like after effects of course, this blending stuff is not really going to turn Camtasia into After Effects or Photoshop, but it certainly gives you more flexibility to create some different interesting effects with different videos, maybe double exposure stuff, maybe little effects, you know, like having different opacity kind of blending modes with the underlying video and so on. So creativity is the limit right here. But yeah, it's good to see this. And I'm pretty sure you need to have hardware support turn on for this to work. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't tested turning it off yet. 
Another tiny thing that was added and you know sometimes with the new releases of Camtasia I'm a little frustrated because there isn't a comprehensive list of what's new. So you kind of have to dig around and kind of click on everything and figure out what's happening. Well, one of these things is if you click on this VU meter here with the toggle audio meter, this is something that was introduced last year, but this time they made it a little bit more useful in terms of there's this global audio gain. So what I mean by this is I have this project here that has speech and music on it. So watch, uh, watch this. Let's start from this table. Okay, the music is too loud, so I'm gonna click on the music clip and turn the gain down to about, I don't know, 16% or something. Let's see. This equals some... I can also control the gain on the voice, turn that up. Value, and this equals some value. So maybe I have some music now with some voice on it, okay. But with the global audio gain, you can turn on up or down the volume for the entire project. So if I turn it down, you can hear the relationship between the two music tracks was maintained, but the overall volume came down. Everything kind of scales up and down sound-wise uh, proportionally. So this is called, I think, a, maybe a global audio gain that you can use for your project. Um, so it's available here if you click on this VU meter down here. And of course, if you go too high, it's going to show you that it's clipping. Table. You can see there, you have the red indicator that you have now turned it up too high. Camtasia 2022 also now includes a new export screen, a production screen. So if you go to the export menu on the top right, you can see now that there's a new one that's called local files, just like before. It is green. You still have the legacy one, which is the old version of this screen. And the, the new one looks a little more unified. There's a single interface right here and you can specify the file name. You can specify the format and the save location and if you click on advanced settings then you have all of the other options that um, you have for the format the dimensions the encoding frame rate quality and the audio quality this looks very reduced in functionality and I think they're working on bringing new stuff back in it is missing the table of contents the markers functionality and it seems to not remember the last used options which I quite enjoy in the other versions and if you're still using the legacy one it's still available here because I guess TechSmith um, realizes that a lot of people need more options so the uh, problem here is that the dimension the encoding quality I usually put 75 here kind of the maximum you can get quality for and um, as soon as you export the settings go back to these ones, these default ones. So the audio also only goes as high as 192 kilobytes. I usually do more, 300 or 256 or something like that. So again, you know, this is uh, still a work in progress, I think. You can still get to the old one if you go export legacy local file. And there you go, you have the previous one, which you have all of the options still in there. So I don't know if this is going to be improved in the next few weeks, few months, maybe. But uh, yeah, I would like to see some more automation stuff in there like batching, uh, which you can do from the file menu and you go to the batch production. This could be improved a little bit, but I'm not going to go into detail on that one. So yeah, there's a new export screen coming. It's kind of similar to the one on the Mac where it seems to be everything in one window. TechSmith has taken a new functionality from last year and have moved it forward a little bit. So you know that they launched Audiate in, I think, 2022, which uh, is a software that allows you to load an audio file or record yourself talking and then transcribes that and turns it into text so then you can edit your audio as text you know just edit the text remove filler words like ums and uhs and all those things and then cut them out and then save your audio in a clean version and so on well what I didn't like last time it was that there was not a tight integration between Camtasia and Audiate so if I was doing a project in Camtasia, 
I could go and open that audio into Audiate, transcribe it, and then make my cuts, make my edits, clean up my audio. But then I couldn't really go back to Camtasia and have my project still synchronized to the new cut audio. You know, the audio became out of sync because I made cuts in it. Well, this is no longer the case now. There is tighter integration between Camtasia and Audiate. So let me demonstrate. I have this project here. It's about eight minutes, doesn't matter. But as before, you can right click on an audio file inside of your project and you can choose Edit in Audiate. So what this does is look, you can click on this, Edit in Audiate. It will render the audio as a file that Audiate can edit, probably a WAV file or an MP3 or something like that. And then it's going to sort of lock Camtasia into place. So you can't go back to editing unless you force it to. You can unlink from Audiate or close Camtasia. So what happened is this file, look at here, it opened Audiate for me and it is now transcribing the audio file. If I go back to Camtasia, it's saying that I can, of course, edit the text in Audiate with the audio. And when I'm done, click export, export to Camtasia, which is going to take that audio and come back to Camtasia. But in order to keep the synchronization in place, you can't be making changes in Camtasia while you're also editing the audio in Audiate. So which is why the Camtasia is now linked to Audiate. So you need to leave it alone and you need to go back to Audiate and wait for the transcription to finish. I am guessing this is happening in the cloud so that, you know, the transcription happens in the cloud. So you need to wait for the file to upload and the transcription to come back. It's transcribed my audio from the file. And now you can see that in Audiate, you can make cuts. And of course, it shows you these red uh, sort of purple dots. Those are filler words. It seems I've been doing very well on this one because I don't have so many. So here we go. If I play here, for example, you can click on a word. You can edit the WAV file. You can, you know, so have you, as you heard, there was a filler word in there, uh. So you can click on that and you can say, you know, delete or silence. It depends what you want to do. If you delete, of course, it's going to compress the time and, and kind of bring those words together there. If you silence it, you're just not going to hear it anymore. So I'm going to delete this. And actually, if you go to the edit menu, you can uh, delete all hesitations. I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do that, or you can silence them, by the way, or silence all the pauses, which was another thing that people request in your know, silence detection in Camtasia. I don't know if that's gonna come, but anyway, delete all hesitations. So I have made a few cuts now, and you know what? Let's go crazy, and I'm going to remove a bit of a, a chunk of the audio to here with the text like this. I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to destroy my project. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to cut a few bits out and let's see, and I'm going to actually do it at the very start. Okay. So hello, this is Christy in today's Camtasia video. I'm not going to keep you long. I just... Okay. So I'm going to just cut out the second sentence right there. Okay. So I've made some cuts. My audio is no longer the same length as my Camtasia project. So I'm going to go to the file menu and choose export to Camtasia. So let's see what happens. So it's asking me, what do I want to do? Do I want to edit the Camtasia timeline, which means I'm going to keep my entire timeline in sync. I think that's what I want or edit only your original video media to match audio edits. Let's go with the first one, edit Camtasia timeline. This is going to make cuts in my Camtasia project to match the audio. Let's see, click on this export. It's asking me to save the project first. So I'm going to save it. And it's now exporting the test to Camtasia, the project. And I am back in Camtasia and now Camtasia has become unlocked. Now let's play the first, uh, I can see now that the audio still matches the duration of my video, but let's play the first part where I was actually saying hello and then I was making cuts. Hello, this is Christy. In today's Camtasia video, I'm not going to keep you long. You can't find them in the settings screen. There you go. So as you can see, 
Audiate made cuts to my Camtasia project and the media is actually stitched. If you look here, it's made cuts to this. Well, I didn't have these cuts here before. It has made cuts to the other assets on my timeline to keep in sync with the changes that I made in my audio file. This is nice, but I would like, I mean, of course, it requires these two programs. It requires a subscription to Audiate, which has come down in price from the time they launched the first time. And another thing I don't like really with Audiate, and, you know, sad to say that, you know, maybe this is something to do with my projects, maybe. There is no punctuation here. So if I want to use this as a subtitle, I will have to do a lot of editing here to make it work because otherwise I don't see how I can possibly use this for my um, maybe YouTube subtitles. Audiate has a lot of other things and I'm, I'm going to do a review of Audiate in a, in a future video. You have a lot of effects here you can use. You can, you know, change a bunch of stuff. You can add noise reduction, leveling, DSing and all that stuff. So that's all audio based stuff. But in terms of text editing, I believe uh, maybe there's a problem here with my, my system because I should have had punctuation. Uh, I think that's one of those things that was going to prevent you from maybe using this as a subtitle editor. So if I go to export script, I can export as SRT file, which is a subtitle file or as a text file, you know, my entire text. I'm not going to do this now, but yeah, Audiate has such potential. I, you know, it would have been amazing if this was integrated into Camtasia so that you can edit stuff right there. I don't know how that could be achieved because I feel like it could be a very resource intensive and kind of some UI limitations in there. So yeah, there you have it. So this is the new stuff that was added in Camtasia 2022 now, keeping actually keeping your project in sync with the audio if you edit in Audiate externally. I can't confirm this 100% and I'm not sure if it works properly. I haven't really tested this, but it seems that now there's more support for virtual cameras in Camtasia 2022. And as you can see here in the camera selection, I have the mm -hmm camera, which is a virtual camera. And I was looking at a TechSmith support sort of forum article that was recently updated. And it says now that there is tested and working virtual webcams for these ones, Camo, Elgato, Canon, EOS camera with the cam link. So you can technically connect your Canon um, DSLR to Camtasia to record in 4K. And you have, of course, the mm -hmm app, mini cam, chroma cam. And of course, these seems to not be working. Maybe they're working on this OBS studio. I know this is one uh, feature that a lot of people request and Canon EOS webcam utilities and all those to use your DSLR as a webcam but also now to record in Camtasia with. So I'm afraid this is a bit of a, you know, maybe working progress, maybe not yet really. I don't know. Maybe TechSmith can confirm if there's more support for these coming soon. So I actually don't know what's involved in getting all this technology to work well and reliably. I know a friend uses a cam camera link with a Sony camera, I think, to record and it's not very stable. So we had to go back to recording the video right on the camera and then transfer it and edit in Camtasia. So, you know, you may have to still do that for a while. There is now a duplicate function. You no longer have to rely on copy and paste. And the duplicate actually works nicely on two places. One is on the canvas. If you want to duplicate an object, you can just click on it, hold down the control key and drag. So you can see that makes a copy of that object. So there's more of me to go around right now. So that's control drag on any object on the canvas to duplicate. If you want to duplicate something that is on the timeline, you can go and click on that and press Control D. And that is quite sad. Look, Control D. It's not sad, really. It's just because I was relying on the shortcut Control D to remove a selection that I made on the timeline, which was, you know, if you add a selection, you press Control D to deselect instead of double clicking here. Well, that shortcut has now changed to control shift D to make room for this control D shortcut to duplicate object. So my shortcut 
is now control shift D. I just got used to it and now I have to change it. But anyway, doesn't matter. So the duplicate function is something that you can now use on both the canvas and the timeline. A small little function was added in the menus in the right-click menu in Camtasia 2022 to allow you to restore the audio if you have muted it. If I have this audio file down here, I can right-click and silence the audio or I can press Shift and S and now the audio is gone. So in the previous versions, if you wanted to bring the audio back for that file, you had to go to the Modify, Remove All Audio Points and then your audio came back. Well. Right now, if you have silenced your audio, you can right click again and say restore audio. And there's a shortcut for this shift R, which will bring back the audio. A new function that was added in 2022 is to repeat media, which if you remember, I did a video recently, well, last year, which showed you how to repeat a clip or loop a clip, which really just involved copy and pasting it a bunch of times. But now there is a repeat media function which allows you to extend and repeat a clip, not extend, to repeat a clip up to the end of the project or to the beginning of the project, depending on where it is. So let me show you. I have this wave, um, ocean waves kind of video here, and I have a text on top of it. Well, if I right click on this, I can't repeat it because there's no more project to go, right? I, at the end, my project kind of ends here. But if I extend this text for, let's say, 3 minutes 40, so then I want to have this ocean loop kind of repeating all the way to the end of my project, I can right click on it. And now you have repeat media and it says extend right. If I click this, it fills my timeline with as many copies of that clip as required to fill to the end of wherever that was the end of the timeline. Well, what happens with the last one is if it's shorter than it needs to be, it's going to cut it off. So you can also see that these are not uh, necessarily individual copies of the clip, separate clips. They are actually a, treated as a single clip and they are stitched together because it's the same media anyway. So now I have created a quick loop. So you watch if I play past one of these stitch points, it just repeats. It kind of hesitates there for a second. So I guess it depends on your video and you know, if it's a seamless repeating one or not, if it works well. And another way that you can repeat is going back. So if I go to my media bin and put this one, let's see, I'm putting it at the end the repeat also works backwards. So I say repeat media, extend left. So that's going to fill to the left. Again, many copies of it stitched together to fill the timeline. The one thing that I've noticed is if I make a copy of the clip here and I actually make a cut to it, like I make it like half the length. If I right click and say repeat media, extend right, it's actually going to repeat just that chunk of video. So if you have a video that you can make it kind of seamless repeating inside of Camtasia without having to cut it in an external program, then you can use that and just tell Camtasia to repeat. And what I've noticed is also this. If I have an animation on my clip, so I go to add an animation to it. Maybe I'm going to make a, a simple animation just zooming in. When I repeat this, right click and repeat media, the animation gets replicated, but it's kind of weird. I don't know if that actually makes it useful. So you can see it gets to a point where there's a short animation. It creates the animation back at the stitch point to the previous step so that it can repeat that animation for you in the same, same starting position. So it's kind of awkward. I don't know how you could maybe use animations on repeated clips. But anyway, the thing is, it's going to repeat the animation. So if you're doing anything else than scaling it, maybe that's useful to you. But just so you know, you know, Camtasia kind of creates all those animations in between to get your object back to what it was before repeating it again. So there you go. You can see all these animations applied along the, the timeline. 
Camtasia 2022 also includes a few new transitions, not as many as last year, but I've noticed some transitions in the 3D group. For example, there's a card flip, card flip swap, card slide, card swap, then there's the cube rotate, which were there before. I see the snapshot one looks like a nice photo transition, you know, so there might be more. I don't know exactly how many they are, but if you want, I can make a video just showcasing all the new transitions if you want. Another little effect that was added in Camtasia 2022 is a spotlight effect. So you find it in the visual effects and you just add it to a video and it creates this spotlight effect. You can move around to maybe highlight some of, you know, important area in your video. And if that's playing, you know, you can see that spotlight effect there. You can adjust the origin point of the light and you can adjust the length the, of the light. And then here you, you can assign the opacity and the brightness and the focus. So you can make this beam tighter or wider. So that's a quite, uh, you know, cute little addition. It can also be animated. So if I add an animation here and I move the spotlight somewhere else by dragging this end bit here, or maybe even the origin, you can see that it actually moves on the video. So it's quite interesting. Uh, you can draw attention to certain areas while you have some other content in another side. So there you go. Another effect, which I think you could achieve in other programs too, is this outline edges. You can add it to a video and it just converts it to sort of like a black and white vector looking graphic. You can change the intensity right here, or you can change the, the saturation so that you can have it still retain some color. And there you go. You can actually make it look like a animated sketch or something like that. Again, I can't really think of a use case for this apart from making something look Victor <laughs> um, and animated at the same time. Camtasia also includes support for H.265 format. So that is actually a, a big deal because it's a new format. It's more advanced than H.264 and it means better compression for your videos, higher quality, particularly for streaming. And, you know, they occupy like maybe half the space that it needs for H.264. And a lot of people have requested this. It is available now in Camtasia 2022. I don't know what that's going to do for sort of performance or, you know, the way that it decodes it. But um, yeah, it is uh, now available. So I haven't actually tested it. I don't have an H.265 file right now. So there you have it. These are the features that I've been able to discover so far. And I am curious if you are considering upgrading to Camtasia 2022, or maybe if you have the maintenance plan, you will probably already have this new version. You know, let me know in the comments what features you like, what you don't like, if you would love, if you were waiting for something to be added and it wasn't. If you're disappointed, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, which includes tips for Camtasia, new videos, advanced video releases for you, downloadable assets and all those tips in the future. So I'm not just asking to subscribe just for the uh, draw, but of course you can be also entered in the draw for winning one of two Camtasia 2022 licenses, courtesy of TechSmith. So thank you very much TechSmith for those. So if you do decide to buy or upgrade to Camtasia 2022, I have a link in my description that is an affiliate link. If you click that, I will have a small commission from TechSmith uh, for your upgrade. Of course, if you click also, you could get a discount if it's a new purchase and, you know, it would help support my work, my channel, and I would really appreciate it. So thank you very much for that if you decide to do that. And then, well, there you go. In the new videos coming up next week, this week, also in the next few days, I will be covering these new features in more details. And I will be making some videos that apply some of these new features, some of the new assets included in the library. As you have seen, they can be used or reused in various scenarios. And I have a few video ideas that I've written down that I'm going to record and they will showcase some of these new features and the way that I would use them. And, you know, so if you have any ideas about this or if you found any features that I haven't covered here, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to look at those and create a video for those as well. So 
Thanks again for watching. I know this was a long video, so if you stuck around, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And, you know, on my channel, I'm covering Camtasia. I'm covering Descript and other software that I use every day in my work. I do appreciate your time and see you next time.